Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here. Welcome to episode 22 of my Ratchetcraft tutorial series. So in this episode, we're going, we're back looking at the toroid magnets again to fill in the gaps of information um, that was left out of the last video. Because it's very important that we know exactly what we have to do for these things. And uh, like every part of the fusion reactor, uh, these magnets are not uh, very simple. So uh, the first thing I want to mention um, going into this. Uh, we talked a little bit about, well, uh, in the last video, uh, we talked about how to lay these things out. Um, so we've got them in their nice ring pattern, and we know we have to rotate them like this, but there's another bit to it. Um, when you rotate one of these, uh, it puts out uh, this white circle around it, and there's a blue line. Did you see that blue uh, blue arrow? Did you see that blue arrow? I'll whack it again. Gotta whack the center. See that blue arrow? That blue arrow has to be pointed towards the solenoid. See, you can see it better in the middle, that blue line. It needs to be pointed towards the center, towards the uh, solenoid. If it's not, then it's not going to work. Um, so all of these, pretty much, are turned the exact opposite direction as they should be turned. Um, <laughs> which means I've got to uh, rotate them all around. Um, but it also means that you can do this without the um, without the uh, visualizer torch in the middle. Um, as long as you just point the arrows as close as they can get to the center of the solenoid. So you just have to make sure when you rotate these that they are indeed rotated the proper direction. So we're just going to rotate this quadrant. I've already rotated the quadrant over there. Um, actually, we're not going to rotate the uh, quadrant all the way yet. So we're now going to talk about the Van de Graaff generators and how to power these things. So the way that I've uh, what I've found out is that uh, in order to power these uh, toroid magnets, um, I was right about the Van de Graaffs, and I was actually right about where we placed them. Um, you place the Van de Graaffs uh, on this block right here, which is, there's one block uh, between uh, of space there, and then you put the Van de Graaff down here. So there, you want there to be a gap between the Van de Graaff and the bottom of the um, uh, toroids render, rather than sticking it a block up, which would clip through it. You want to put it right there. Um, now the reason it wasn't working, Rekha told me, is because the Van de Graaff generator was actually discharging into these laboratory blocks right here. Um, so I find that if I replace these laboratory blocks with some other material, it doesn't have to be wool, just I'm replacing it with a non-conductive material that looks very similar to the uh, block I was using. Uh, and now it'll work. So uh, if I go ahead and um, put the output side over there, and I don't really care. What, I'm going to change this later. Um, I, don't, I don't really care how it looks right now. And uh, so now we want to power this thing with our industrial coil. <laughs> so uh, the amount of power we want to give this thing, Rake has suggested 8 megawatts. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put 64 newton meters of torque. Uh, get my cord up the way. And we're going to put 128,000 radians per second. Uh, and that's going to give us quite a nice amount of power. So we're going to put that there. We're going to turn this on. That's going to go. It's going to have a pink lightning on it. And now what you'll notice is that the uh, pink lightning is sort of bouncing between the uh, the rings, but it's not uh, it's not working particularly well. Um, and the reason for this is that you need to have your um, your rings turned the right way. I find that if they're not turned the right way, it doesn't want to actually transfer the charge. See, now that that's turned the right way, it's starting to transfer the charge properly. Is it, was that one correct? I guess it was, actually. Oop! Ah, oh, darn it. I broke it. That is the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I think this is the right placement. Did I get the right placement for that? I did. I'm pretty good. And then this one is probably turned out as well. So what we can see is we can see that there are little lightning bolts jumping between these various uh, bits here. Although not quite as many as I would want. Uh, I got it quite. I got it set up over on this side. They only seem to travel counterclockwise. Did I put more power into this one? No, I didn't. The lightning bolts only seem to, it's kind of hard to see actually, it might just be because of the, uh, the frame rate, um, it was a little higher earlier. 
basically you need to have these lightning bolts jumping between all the rings. So then, they, like I said, they only seem to go uh, counterclockwise. That doesn't look right, but it is. Um, so what you want to do is you want to face north uh, on the northern side of your uh, ring and, and put it right there on the left. And then you just go around and make sure that you're putting the Van de Graaff generator uh, so that the lightning would be traveling uh, counterclockwise. Now, I think Reka did say once you have the, um, the plasma injectors in the middle, they can actually, I think he said they can transfer the charge to the next ring. So if you put in enough power, you would only need to have one Van de Graaff. But I kind of like redundancy. Uh, and symmetry, so I'm still going to put uh, four Van de Graaff in one in each quadrant. It works well for me. Now, the uh, the colors of the static jumping between the toroids will change. If I turn the power off, you'll notice that there are still lightning bolts because there's still a stored charge that, that's really traveling. But the colors are going to change as far as these go. So if, from what I remember, um, the this pinkish purplish color is what you, you want to get to that point. If that blue is means there's not enough, then it goes down to white and yellow, it's still not enough. And it will get down to, um, it will go black actually, uh, which is really not enough. So you want to get it to that nice pink color, I would, I, I would think, because um, it looks nice, and that's what you want to do. Now let's talk about the other bit uh, to the toroid magnet. So that's two things we've covered so far. Make sure when you rotate these that the blue arrow is pointed towards the center of the um, of the toroid. Uh, also, when you're placing Van de Graaff generators, remember to place them um, one block below where the uh, render is so and then make sure there's no conductive blocks around it and give it about eight megawatts of power okay so that's two things the third thing that these toroids need is the cooling um and the reason the way you cool these i'm not going to go into the reason you cool these i'm not the engineer is by place it by feeding them with liquid nitrogen okay and that's how you do it okay so you want to have uh liquid nitrogen pipe you want to have liquid pipes uh and what happens, the reason that this, that this works is because remember that the actual toroid block is right here in the middle. And what the toroid will do is it will search the second block above the center for a liquid pipe. So right here where the liquid pipe looks like it's going into the, uh, uh, the render here. It searches that square for a pipe. And if it finds the pipe and, it fi and there's liquid nitrogen in it, it'll transfer the liquid nitrogen into the uh, into the toroid. I wish you could angular transducer. I wish you could whack these with the angular transducer to see like uh, the storage amount, but you can't. Um, I am on the latest version of Reactor Craft. A very new version just came out. So this is one technique you can use to line these up properly, because you can still place blocks against the toroid block, even though it's, uh, it's invisible. Um, and that might help you to um, get these connected properly. So the way I'd probably do it is just connect this all together in one big ring. Now, Reka has told me how much liquid nitrogen this system will require, and it's quite uh, significant. So you're going to need to be able to supply this with about 10 uh, buckets of liquid nitrogen per second. Uh, so you're going to need a lot of refrigeration units pumping out a lot of liquid nitrogen. He also said that you're going to need to use a high flow pipe. So I'd probably advise you to use these liquid pipes because they have a very high uh, flow. Um, if you're using certain kinds of liquid pi of pipes from other mods, they might not be able to keep up uh, with the f with the amount of liquid you have to push through them. Uh, and what, he, what Rick had said is that these things will not explode if they run out of coolant, but they will stop working. Uh, and the last thing you want when there's plasma running through this thing is for one of these uh, magnets to turn off and the plasma will go shooting out of the ring and destroy whatever is in its path. Um, <laughs> like I think, if I remember correctly, Rick said that somebody on, on their server uh, got killed when that happened because he just so happened to be standing in the path of the plasma. So that's not a good thing. So remember, that's uh, three important things to remember about your toroids when you've got them placed in the ring. Make sure when they're rotated properly that the blue arrow is pointed towards the center. Place your Van de Graaffs one square below uh, the toroid. Give it about eight megawatts. It will jump to the other toroids that are in the, uh, the quadrant. And uh, make sure there's no uh, conductive blocks around the Van de Graaff that would take the power. And make sure that you've got uh, liquid nitrogen set up. All right. Just to show you, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab a reservoir of liquid nitrogen. Um, this, you're not going to be able to see that it's going into the toroid because the toroid doesn't have any visible representation of that. Um, but maybe that you can kind of tell. It looks like the liquid is going outside of the pipe, 
It is going into the toroid. Um, there's probably not a whole lot left in here. There's only 1,800 and, and 18,000 and uh, 669 millibuckets of liquid nitrogen, whereas uh, this is only two, uh, two pipes. If I place two pipes here uh, and then place this here, uh, it's, it's going to have, see, it's got 21,000 millibuckets uh, and this one's got 18,000, which, which shows you that some of that is going inside the toroid. It's not all just going into the pipe, otherwise this one would also have 18,000 units. So, those are the things that it needs, don't forget it. Uh, of course, you'll see these li this later when it's all set up and, uh, and running. In the next uh, episode of this Reactor Craft tutorial series, um, we're going to talk about the, uh, the plasma injectors, and you're also going to be able to see I'll have this toroid ring completely set up, and you'll be able to see that. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've got to go and eat dinner, because for some reason my parents are eating at 3.30. Um, <laughs> stay tuned for future episodes. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.